Parents, it's Question and Answer Thursday, so welcome! Today's question is all about how do I get my teenager to clean up their room when it's disgusting? All right, let's get to our question. This parent says, my child is a slob. I walk into their room and it's code red hurricane disaster area. The other day I went to their room and I found empty wrappers everywhere, dirty dishes and bowls under the bed. The hard and leftover food pieces were laying on the dresser. It was completely disgusting. I can't tell you how many times I've asked my son to clean up their room and not eat in there, but they don't listen. I know that I must have night mice now because of all the leftover food running around on the floor, and how do I get my kid to listen? I can't take it anymore. All right, first of all, you are totally not alone like most of parenting teenagers do this. I don't know why, but they just do. If you have a clean teenager, you're the one that's an anomaly because all the rest of us have this issue. So, all right, I'm going to give you some four tips of what you can do. The first tip you're not going to like. The first tip is let it go. Now, I'm going to be really specific here that when I say let it go, I mean think about picking your battles and this may not be one of them. And I'm not talking about the sanitary issues, which we are going to get to in just a moment, but I am talking about clothes laying all over the floor. The reason why is that teenagers need space. They actually need a very private space. It helps them grow. It's something that they can decorate, something that they, helps them actually develop their sense of identity. So when you give them their room, as in this case, and then you say, you have to keep your room a certain way, you're taking away a little bit of that from them, a little bit of their choices. You're taking away um, their sense of how they want to keep their room, even if there's some consequences to that. So think about that and see if, you know, is it really that important? Can you shut the door? Maybe try not to look too much. And do you really want to hit this battle? Um, so that would be my suggestion. Number one, really look at yourself actually as a parent and think, can I let this go? All right. Number two suggestion is, all right, you're going to set some boundaries on the food because the food, when it comes down to that, that's sanitary. So now you have to sit down your child and say, look, you having food all over the floor is actually bringing in spiders, mice, things like that, that could be really disgusting. Um, by taking your towel and putting it on the floor and it's wet, it could produce mold. Now we have a health issue. And actually tell your child this because they may not see it. They may not even understand that that's what's happening when they do these things because that's not how they think. So just actually sit them down and say, this is now a health problem. Because it's a health problem, I now need to step in because my job as a parent is to keep you healthy. So once you cross that health line, now I have to step in as a parent and really take, take a little bit of control and there's going to be some consequences. So you talk to them about those boundaries. Now, all right, now we're to tip number three. After you've established that, if your child and you, you know best what's, what, how your child's going to react to certain things, but if your child will sit down and talk to you with those things, the next step is problem solve with them. And that means instead of you dictating what's going to happen, if you don't clean your room by this time, then this consequence is going to happen and you being in control of everything and dictating what's going to happen from here on out, try instead negotiating. So you now you're saying, now there's a problem. You've crossed over the health line issue. I now have to step in as your parent to keep you healthy. How are you going to solve this problem? Because we need to fix it. This can't happen anymore. You're creating a boundary with this, but you're also giving them the opportunity to have some control on how they're going to fix the situation. Teenagers like that. They want control. They want to have some say in their life. And with say, they're much more likely to have a good reaction from it. They're much more likely to start following the rules and start doing things, and especially when they know the consequences. So work with your child with how are we going to solve this problem? We're going to problem solve together. It's also great role model for problem solving. It's great practice for problem solving. It's just my most favorite thing to do with my teenagers. It does take time, but it's the learning experience and the after effect of how well they um, respond is phenomenal. It's, it's much better than if you're dictating everything. 
Which brings me to the next suggestion of when you create your boundaries with them, you may want to go to um, suggest that because there are boundaries with uh, food and health, that you're going to start doing inspections. Because they've left their room certain ways, now you have to step in, you'll start doing inspections, and you pick a time of when those inspections might happen. I also highly suggest that you give your teenagers some time to clean up their act, literally. And I don't mean clean it up in an hour or, or else. No, 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 it's gonna take them longer than that. I say give them a day or two. You pick a day or two from there and say, if it's not done by five o'clock at this time, these consequences will be implemented. And maybe those consequences are the inspections. Maybe those consequences are um, taking everything off of the floor and donating it at that point because they're just not complying. And with a lot of everything else in parenting, you guys have to be consistent and you have to stick by whatever comes out of your mouth. So if you say you're gonna donate everything that you see left on the floor after 5 p.m. tomorrow, you actually have to take all that stuff, even if it's an Xbox, and clean it up off of the floor and donate it. So be careful with what you say because you need to think, are you really going to implement that consequence? Um, some parents will and some parents won't, and you have to know your own boundaries on what you're going to be able to say about that. So let's say you do have, as one of the consequences, inspections. Now, I want to clarify something. I highly suggest inspections, but you are not searching. There are two different things happening here. You're not trying to invade their privacy by doing an inspection. And this is huge. To invade privacy, they have to conflict to other different types of trust. Maybe you'd be afraid of drug use or something like that. That is where you're actually going to do a search and look for things. But not in this case for cleaning your room. For cleaning your room, an inspection is completely different. And please keep those boundaries because, again, teenagers will push back and relationships will fail if you push too much. So what's the difference between a search and an inspection? Okay. Well, when you do an inspection, you're going to walk into the room, look to see that you can see the floor and that the floor is good. Then you check mark that off. Hey, good job. Then you're going to take it, look underneath the bed. Are things lying underneath the bed that shouldn't be there? If it's good, check mark, you're good. Then you're going to look at the closet and you just open the door. You step in, look to make sure that nothing was thrown in the closet carelessly and that there, again, there's not food and stuff in there. That check marks, good. Take a dresser drawer. Open it up, look inside, make sure there's not food in there. Check marks, good. What's different from an in the, that inspection where you're just looking with your eyes than searching is searching as you're actually looking for something. Now you're taking stuff out of the drawer and seeing if there's anything at the bottom. and That's a search. That's different and it's more appropriate for a different time when a, with a more serious situation. So again, I highly suggest the inspection versus the search. And my last suggestion to you, my, we're on like four or five, I forgot now, but my last uh, tip for you is buy a lockbox. And what I mean by that, yep, this is mine. This is my lockbox, easily purchased on Amazon, and it has a lock on it. Why do I have a lockbox? I put uh, snacks in here that I don't want my teenagers to be able to sneak and eat as much of it as they absolutely want. So, for example, I had a teenager for a while there that was eating too much goldfish. Now, I like goldfish, and a little bit of goldfish is absolutely fine, but they were eating all of the goldfish. So I took the goldfish, and you put it in the lockbox. Candies, potato chips, things like that can go in the lockbox. And now, they can't access it in the middle of the night when you're not looking or any other time. And then they get embarrassed, they go eat it in their room, they take those wrappers, they throw them underneath the bed. You're solving the problem from the source this way, you guys. So you take it and you put it in the lockbox and now your teenager or child has to ask you for permission to eat those certain specialty items. Now, I keep fruits and vegetables out for my teenagers to eat at any time they want. They can have as much of that as they possibly want, but this lockbox is special for things that I don't want them to have easy access to due to health concerns. So again, you can explain to them that they are not being healthy and your job as a parent is to keep them healthy and because they can't set boundaries for themselves, then you'll set boundaries for them. And now they have to ask you for their snacks. So, and after they, your teenager starts to establish 
some responsibility and trust, you know, you can take things back out of the lockbox. There's not saying that, hey, I have to have this lockbox forever and ever and ever. No, you can switch it around because you're the parent and you are in control. You're the decider. So you can totally give those privileges back when they are ready to earn them. So I hope that helps you today. And if you have a question for me, <coughs> excuse me, for next week, please submit those questions to me by either DMing me or emailing me at theimpactfulparent at gmail.com. I love to get your questions, you guys. Have an amazing Thursday, and we'll see you next Question and Answer Thursday.